necessarily become negative, but how do you create content that it speaks to your client in the atmosphere that we are, whether if it's that you want to pivot into a more positive, but use a more aggressive way to deliver the message. So it's just really about pivoting and understanding what is going on in the market and how does that speak to your core brand and then working that around that. I agree 1 million percent. I think my process has been all about, um, I am a, I'm a spiritual person. I grew up in the church. And so for me, how I stay inspired, how I stay innovative, I pray. You know, before every design, before every uh, product that I put out, because when you are, when you start making it, you know, quote unquote, you start getting a lot of inquiries. People want to do business with you. How do you keep up with that with your, you know, finite mind? So for me, it's like if God is bringing these opportunities in, in order for me to take advantage as fast as they're coming, I need you to give me this idea now. And so my innovative shopping around, looking around to see what's, what's going on, um, especially if there's a company that's like, hey, make this and this thing. Um, I did a Ghostbusters collab with K-Swiss, and um, it was the first time they did a Ghostbusters collab, but not a first time for sneakers. So I, I looked around, saw everything that they did, and I'm like, okay, here's the missing thing, you know? And so I was able to create a shoe that um, was the first translucent case Swiss that ever existed. It glowed in the dark, it was cool, it looked like Slimer thing sold out. They said it's the fastest selling capsule they've ever had in Foot Locker. But that came out of me seeking God first, then shopping around, then, you know, doing all the things that she said and then um, executing on that. So that's how I stay innovative and stay creative at the same time with the times changing. It's like, you don't have to change, but you do have to address the change. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges I see working with creatives, I'm very much the infrastructure, as Marge said, um, making sure that you understand your target. And I think back to what they both said, and understanding your competition, but also understanding who your target is and making sure that you are consistently designing for that person. So if you're a designer over 20 years, your person is growing with you. So you will evolve over time, but I always use Chanel as a great example. Chanel is known for the tweed, the quilted bag. You've seen that every single year after year. Balmain, very similar thread throughout the branding. Um, but they stay true to who their consumer is. Even if their capsules or collections vary from year to year, there is still a consistency to their consumer. They know who their girl is or their man, and they, consider, they <coughs> consistently design for them. So I, I think that that is really hard when you're creative because you want to follow the trends because you see people are going viral or the Western thing right now. Like you see these little trends, but that doesn't mean that it works for you. It doesn't mean that it works for your brand or your consumer. So I think staying creative, always be shopping and, and understanding the consumer and the market. Uh, if you're a bridal designer, you should be going to bridal shows. You should be looking at magazines, following bridal, you know, influencers, and just engulfing yourself in that, and immersing yourself in that world, so that you stay inspired and really stay in your niche, but also stay ahead with, you know, how you're executing your creativity. So, you guys, you work with a variety of different clients, and you probably vet them and you know decide who you're going to work with. When you get to that, when you get to that place where you decide to work with a client, um, and I'll start with you, Felicia, with this because the infrastructure is important to start with. Um, what are the, some of the strong elements for brand identity that you help your clients with to help them stand out from such a crowded market? So we have a very tense homework assignment that I give all my clients. A lot of times they come to me with sketches, fabrics, pictures. I'm like, I don't want to see any of that. <laughs> like, who are we selling to? Like, again, back to who are we? Well, she's like 18 to 45. I'm like, there ain't no way that your clientele is that wide of a range, right? Think about 18 year old and their buying power versus a 40 year old woman. It is a completely different person. So we really truly get down nitty gritty on who the target is. We like to give them a name and it sounds so like tedious of a process. And I, I do find that people are like, yeah, yeah, okay, but I got a logo. I'm like, okay, it's not about the logo. This is a brand development process. 
Um, and once they get that homework assignment and really do it, they're like, wow, this really helped me. This helped me hone into what I want to do. This makes sense. They may pivot. I've had one girl, the funniest, she said, it took me two years to do this assignment. And she really did take two years. And she came back and said, now I got it. I understand who I am as a designer, who I want to sell to. And so that's really the base for us. We do not go past uh, that exercise if our clientele and we don't move forward with any of them if they aren't willing to do that step. Um, it also affects too when you're thinking of sustainability, right? It's such a you know trendy thing. And as soon as I tell them how much packaging is gonna be, they're like, I don't care about them turtles that much. <laughs> so it's true though, like it costs more to be sustainable, but if it's not true to who your customers, do they care? If they don't care about the recycled bags that you paid more for because they're made out of recycled shells from Jamaica, why does that matter? Why would you invest your time in that? So all of this goes back to the brand development process that isn't a logo. It is really understanding who you're building the brand for and making sure that you stay consistent. So that sustainability thing is really, really important when it goes into your sourcing, right? So let's say you want a sustainable brand. Okay, great, now we have to look at fabrics that are sustainable. We have to look at packaging that is sustainable. So if that's something that's gonna go into the thread and the mission and the brand story, then we have to stay consistent or you'll lose people along the way. So the brand development is way more intense than people give it credit for. But once you finish that, you're set for decades to come. You really, really nail that down. Um, so I, I think this really just kind of ties into what you were saying, Felicia, and just really identifying the brand and understanding who you are, 